The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth belongs to the earth, and of the earth he speaks. He who comes from heaven is above all. He bears witness to what he has seen and heard, yet no one receives his testimony. He who receives his testimony sets his seal to this, that God is true. For he, for he whom God has sent utters the words of God. For it is, he, it is not by measure that he gives the Spirit. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. He who believes in the Son has eternal life. He who does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the, the wrath of God rests upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today is Thursday of the second Sunday of Easter. We celebrated Easter Sunday two weeks ago and now we know that the message of Easter is that Christ is risen. And we have proclaimed that, we have sung that. But the question is, once Christ is risen, what follows? The reading that we have been having from the time of the, from the, from the Sunday of the resurrection, what we call Easter Sunday, have been helping us to understand very well what this Easter event means, and also to guide us into action. The readings that we have today invite us, actually, to live the good news the good news of the resurrection. In the gospel that we have just read, John challenges us to accept good news and thereby live forever. The good news gives us life. The first reading, which is from the book of Acts, also focus on living the good news. In this reading, we have the apostles who are living out their mission in spite of danger to themselves. We are told that the members of the Sanhedrin were angry at the apostles because the apostles disobeyed, disobeyed them to stop teaching about Christ. The, the most powerful men in the temple end up frustrated that they cannot control a few fishermen. The apostles on the other part, on the other hand, courageously continue to speak the truth about the Easter event, even at the risk to their own lives. In the face of these members of Sanhedrin, who are murderers, they proclaim that their first obedience must be to God and not men. They have the power from above and they cannot be stopped. Maybe the question that can arise immediately is, why are they bored like this? What is making them to have that kind of courage? And the reason is that the life, death, and the resurrection of Christ has transformed them. The life of Jesus has made them new people. And now they can go out and speak without any fear. This is very important for us today because you and me are now the apostles of today. The question is, has the life, death, and resurrection of Christ transformed us? Are we transformed by this Easter event that we are celebrating now? Because if we are transformed, 
then our transformation will be seen in the way that we are living with our friends. It is quite challenging these days because of the coronavirus pandemic. We are quarantined in our homes. To be transformed means that whatever we say, whatever we do, must show Christ to the members, to the other members of our families. We are supposed to live peacefully with others in our homes. To be transformed by the life, death, and resurrection of Christ means that we need to spend more time with Christ in our homes. Is that a reality among us? Is that a reality for us? Transformation means for us to live the good news. It means to live like Christ amongst our friends. If our friends now begin to complain that our being at home is a burden, then there is something wrong that we must check on. It means that the event of Christ hasn't transformed us. Dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, the word of God today is inviting us to live the good news of the Lord. That Jesus is no longer dead, is alive. And we must show him to the others. We must show him to the world. It is not easy, but it is possible. All what we need is to compose ourselves. Reflect again on the event of Jesus, his life, death, and resurrection. And see if this makes sense to us. It means we need time to sit down, read the Bible, and understand very well what God has for us. Clearly, dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, Easter joy is a gift from God. Let it be our prayer that we can receive the Easter joy that God delights in showering on us. May we, like Jesus' disciples, allow this to transform our lives. And so we can pray that our Lord God should help us to be transformed by this Easter event so that we can also transform the lives of others. So that we can be good news to the people that we live with. We can be good news to the people of our country. We can be good news to the people of the whole world. We are actually invited to preach good news to the whole world as Jesus commanded his disciples before he went to heaven that you must now go and preach the good news. This is us today being ordered to do that, to follow that command. But first of all, before we do that, we need to be transformed by the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Let this, let this be our prayer that God transforms us so that we can be able to preach the good news to the whole world. May God bless you all. Amen. Regina Celi, Lectare, Alleluia, Quia, Quemeru isti potare, Good day,